level, fertile land, where the climate is humid and the growing season is long. This rich farming region produces immense quantities of food. Handling and processing foodstuffs is one of the leading industries of our Middle Western cities. Here are the great cattle markets, where most of the meat that is eaten in the United States is bought and sold. Millions of beef cattle are shipped every year to the nation's stockyard. Most of the animals in the cattle markets of the central states come from Middle Western farms, where they've been fattened on corn. Because the best meat comes from young animals, beef cattle bring the highest price when they're between one and two years old. Every day, buyers from the meat packing companies visit the pens to pick out the cattle they want to buy. As soon as the animals are sold, they're moved to packing plants in the neighborhood. After slaughtering, the meat of the animals is made ready for shipment. The sides of beef are examined by inspectors who grade them for quality. The U.S. government stamp also guarantees that the meat is free from disease. The parts of the animals which cannot be eaten are not thrown away. Fats are used to make soap, bones are turned into gelatin and fertilizer, and the hides are made into leather. The meat is shipped all over the country in refrigerated freight cars and trucks. Because meat is kept very cold in these cars, it stays fresh for long periods of time. Even after it's traveled thousands of miles, it will be in good condition. Many railroads serve the meatpacking cities of the Middle West and keep the meat supply moving. The stockyards and packing plants are at the end of the meat production line. This production line begins in western states, such as Wyoming, where cattle raising is the most important industry. In this region, tremendous herds of cattle graze over millions of acres of grassy plains and trains move eastward across the country to farms in the great corn belt of the Middle West. Here, thousands of animals are fattened for market every year, particularly in Iowa, the leading corn producing state. Corn grows well in Iowa and neighboring states because the summers are hot and there's plenty of rain. The full-grown corn stands higher than a man. When corn was discovered growing wild in the Western Hemisphere, it was not much taller than field grass. Men have cultivated and improved it for hundreds of years, and today corn is one of America's most abundant and valuable crops. The Olson farm near Marshalltown, Iowa, is a prosperous corn belt farm. As the fields are level, Mr. Olson is able to use a great deal of farm machinery. The widespread use of machinery has helped to make the Middle West the greatest food producing region of our country. Mr. Olson and his helpers have to be good mechanics in order to be good farmers. On farms like the Olson's, part of the corn crop is harvested before the ears are fully ripe. The machine which harvests the green corn chops the stalks, leaves and ears to bits. Chopped green corn is fed to the cattle during the winter. The chopped corn is stored in a tall tank known as a silo. This work is done almost entirely by machinery. Bob Olson works the tractor which runs the conveyor belt. Long metal tube, the winter cattle feed is blown to the top of the silo. When the silo is full, it will be tightly closed so that the chopped corn will ferment. This winter feed is called ensilage. After the Olsons have filled their silo, they harvest their other crops. 
Soybeans are one of the most important crops grown on farms in the Corn Belt. They are good for the soil and are sold for making cattle feed and for other purposes. In the fall, the corn left standing in the Olson's fields has ripened. The harvesting machine picks only the ears. The stalks are left on the ground to be plowed under. Harvesting corn day after day is monotonous work. Mr. Olson has installed a radio on his harvester to make the time pass faster. The ears are stored in a corn crib. Later, when there is time, the Olsons will shell some of the ears and grind the kernels into meal. The corn meal is fed to the livestock along with the ensilage. Like the cattle, Mrs. Olson's chickens are fed corn. Corn is the best food for hogs, as well as for cattle and chickens. More hogs are raised in the corn belt of our Middle West than in any other region of the world. Every time Bob and his sister feed their father's hogs, the animals gain weight. A hog gains one pound for every five pounds of corn he eats. But one pound of pork is more economical to ship than five pounds of corn. That's why the Olsons feed corn to their animals and sell them rather than the corn. Middle Westerners say that corn walks to market. While the farmers of the central states have been harvesting their corn, train load after train load of cattle from Wyoming and other western states have been arriving in the Middle West. The second stage in the journey to market begins when the cattle arrive at the unloading pens in Corn Belt towns like Marshalltown, Iowa. After their long trip, the animals are thin, tired, and hungry. Such towns as Marshalltown are shopping centers for farming districts. The prosperity of the townspeople depends on how much money the farmers receive for their corn and livestock. Of the carloads of cattle that have arrived at Marshalltown, a hundred animals are bound for the Olson farm. Mr. Olson and Bob check in the new arrivals. They compare this year's shipment of cattle with last year's. All summer, Bob has been raising a calf of his own. These new animals are thin by comparison. Now that the animals are in the corn belt, they won't be allowed to roam about freely as they did on the western ranch lands. They're kept in a feeding lot near the barn, and day after day they're fed a nourishing diet composed chiefly of corn. Everybody on the farm must work hard to tend and feed so many hungry animals. They begin to gain weight soon after they arrive. All during the fall and winter, they'll get fatter and fatter until they're ready for marketing in the spring. For his own special calf, Bob and his sister carefully weigh out a mixture of feed which includes cubes of concentrated alfalfa. By carefully tending his own calf with his sister's help, 
Bob Olson learns that farming today requires a great deal of care and scientific knowledge. A farmer gets out of his farm only as much as he puts into it. Like many other farm youngsters all over the United States, Bob intends to exhibit his calf at the county fair. When the day of the fair arrives at last, Bob is busy until it's time to leave. During the year under Bob's care, the calf has gained about 900 pounds and is now a fine young animal. In the Middle West, the day of the county fair is a big event for farm families. Cornbelt farmers like the Olsons have just completed a long summer of hard work. The county fair in the fall is an opportunity to meet old neighbors and friends and to enjoy a holiday with them. interested in the latest farm machinery. If his animals and crops bring high prices, Mr. Olson may be able to buy a new tractor next year. The most important event at a Midwestern fair is the cattle show. The competition is keen, particularly among the young farmers, to whom any prize is a great honor. From among the winners at this county fair will be picked the candidates for prizes at the state and national livestock shows. Bob's bull wins a red ribbon for second place. This is the first year Bob has entered the competition and his family is proud of him. Cornbelt farmers usually go to bed early, but county fair night is an exception. Before starting home, Bob spends part of the money he's earned from the sale of his bull, but he'll save most of it for raising an even better calf for next year's show. As their day at the fair comes to an end, it's time for the Olson family to begin thinking about the work that must yet be done before winter sets in. By next spring, the cattle on their farm will be ready for shipment to the markets in the big cities of the Middle West. This part of our country contains thousands of square miles of level, fertile land on which farmers grow corn to fatten the cattle sent to them from the western ranges and grasslands. The farms of the Corn Belt play an important part in producing our country's meat supplies. 